I've had it. They told me not to use my wizard training for my own personal gain, but I have no choice. I'm so sick of the polypropylene hair, the lack of articulation. I'm so sick of not having enough fantasy doll lines. <sighs> okay, here we go. Now the magic words. Let's hope this works. Magicus, Mexicus. <sighs> oh my gosh. I created dolls. <sighs> okay, I can't tell anyone about this. Magic Mixies Hickslings. Oh my gosh. I did it. Well, now I have to go film a doll review. Hey everyone, it's me, X Canadensis. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post new doll related videos almost every single day. And today I'm so excited because one, I just graduated wizard school and two, Moose Toys, in honor of that, offered to send me the Magic Mixies Pixlings dolls for free to share with you guys ahead of their release. I am so excited and I'm so grateful and I cannot wait to show these off. When I first heard these were coming out from like a licensing magazine for toys, I was so excited. These are such a good idea for dolls and I have a really high expectation for them in my head. So hopefully they're able to hold up to that. So Moose sent over two of these to so that I can review them for you guys. And the original line of these, so the inaugural line, seems to have three characters, all of whom are shown on the front of the packaging. And this is what the packaging actually looks like. Looks like a little potion bottle. And these dolls actually retail for $17.99, which kind of impressed me considering how much the Magic Mixies cauldron and the crystal ball retailed for. And this comes with a whole doll as opposed to a plushie. So I'm really interested to see how the unboxing experience is and if it holds up to the price point as well as the actual toy itself. So without further ado, let's get started opening our first Magic Mixies Pixling. I'm so excited. I've been so eagerly awaiting this moment. So it looks like the first step is to tear on this little tear strip on the front of the packaging. So let's do it. As you guys know, I can never tear these. Oh, it actually teared almost all the way down there. Yeah, okay. Here we go. And then there's this little area here that's rubber banded on. And I think this is where we're gonna find our instructions. I hope so. <laughs> okay, so, ooh, these are liquids. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Here's our little bottle. So, looks like you can just take this little packaging piece right off and then you have your unboxing thing our little potion bottle so here we go so number one we need to check take a look at this so let's check this out all right the instructions are as follows number one potion making can get messy place your potion bottle on a plate for easy cleanup remove paper ring and acetate this, I already prepared for this. There's a towel on the floor and this table is fully washable. Like it'll just wipe right off. So I'm not worried about that, um, but it's important to know. Uh, two, pour in your Pixling Power Elixir. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's happening. It's time. So this appears to be the Pixling Power Elixir. So where do I pour it in? Oh, this is the acetate, this little plastic here. So there we go. Okay. Do I just, I just pour it right in? I'm scared to do something wrong. All right, it says to cut the top and then fold the end of the bag into the opening. That's very smart actually, just like that. And then lift and pour. Let's see, I don't think I cut it low enough or maybe, okay, it's, I have to kind of pop it. Okay, here we go. Oh my goodness, it's like a dark blue color. Whoa, okay. Um, I think I need to cut it just a little bit more. I think I was a little bit too. There we go, okay. Let's try again. There we go, okay. The potion is starting. Oh my goodness, okay. Here we go. Whew. Okay, so <laughs> we've already made a bit of a mess. So <laughs> make sure you guys uh, cover your surfaces. Okay. Number three, fill potion bottle to the line with water. So where's the line? Okay, really obvious fill line there. Thank you. Okay, here we go. This is so pretty. 
already. So, okay. Let's see, I need to be able to see the line. I'm not doing my job properly with pouring this at all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here we go. I filled it a little over the line, so when we have a huge explosion, it's on me. Got it? Okay, number four, we need to sprinkle in the shimmering scales. So that should be box number four. So do I cut this? I, I think it's just in here. I think open this. They're these little tiny sequins, and they look like they are on water-soluble paper. So, all right, let's get them in there. This is an important step in potion making. I would know because I just graduated wizard school, so. Okay, there we go. Next, number five, pour in your pixeling magic elixir. Okay, I think we're nearing completion. This is actually how you create a doll, by the way. Um, okay, fold the end of bag into the opening and lift and pour. So it's the same as before, but this time, this is like some kind of final step. Is it coming out? Yeah, it is. Okay, check it out. Our Pixling Magic Elixir is almost all in. There we go. Okay, now number six, add a coral charm. So I wonder if this is a hint on which character we're getting. I kind of was thinking the shimmering scales might be. We'll see, because there does happen to be a mermaid character um, that we could be summoning. So we'll see, okay. So here is our coral charm. Gotta put that in there, that's important. Okay, now number seven, reveal, remove the golden ring. Oh, this? Okay, so this little thing is our golden ring. <gasps> okay, so the magic words are magicus mixicus and turn the crystal gem until it stops okay <gasps> say the words magic mixicus and push down hard twice on the crystal gem release and wait a minute for the magic to turn your potion clear okay magic is mixicus magic is mixicus magic is mixicus okay do you think it's working oh my gosh so apparently when our when our creature is ready, the water will run clear. I mean, I know all about this because potion making was my specialty. So we'll see. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna get a close up on the bottle so that we can see it um, as it turns clear. While our first potion develops, let's start on our next one. So here's the packaging for the next one and let's get started. So first we need to course, get the outside plastic off. There we go. All right, let's get started on our next potion. So let's start on step two, which is to add the Pixling Power Elixir. So we're going to cut Put it in here. And pour it in. We can start to see our first reagent getting into our potion bottle. All right, just a little more. It's so great that it includes all these ingredients because in potion making, that's the hardest part is having to gather all of the ingredients. And they even gave us the spell. All right, then we need to pill. Then we need to fill the potion bottle to the fill line with water. And I am terrible at this. All right, looks like we're a little bit above the fill line again, but that is okay. Okay, step four is to sprinkle in our dream dust. So we've got a different reagent this time. I think we're casting a different spell, creating a different potion this time. All right, and our dream dust, very important ingredient, so it's packaged very well. They are these little 
these little stars. So let's put them in there. All of them, make sure our doll comes out perfect. Okay, now number five is to pour in our Pixling Magic Elixir. All right, let's get that in there. I've just added our Pixling Elixir and now it looks like this. So final step, we need to, well not the final step, but the final ingredient is to add our magic sparkle horn, our sparkle horn to our potion. Okay, now we need to turn the crystal gem until it stops and here we go. Magicus, Mixicus, Magicus, Mixicus. Okay, now we wait. All right, friends, so I seem to have messed up on the spell, but as you can see, our dolls have appeared. But let me explain. I believe the water is supposed to go clearer. I said magic is Mixicus. It's magic is Mixus. No. So that's a big problem. Also, I think spilling a lot of the um, final reagent has something to do with it. So I am so sorry. I will do better next time. Anyways, now it is time to free our pixlings. So it says, A, unscrew the lid. So that's this piece. Okay. Oh, and then we pull the cylinder out. <gasps> okay, let's get a towel down. I didn't realize she'd be like in there. Okay, here's our doll. All right, we're ready to free our doll. So here is our first pixling doll. And it appears that I got the mermaid. So this is really exciting. Let's get her out of here. Oh, she's so beautiful. So please bear with me. Uh, she did get a little bit of the potion on her because um, if I'm being honest, I actually dropped out of wizard school because I didn't like that they kept telling me what to do. So um, I think I need to preface with that. Um, okay, now let's let out our second pixling. So you unscrew the lid, it'll pop out. Oh my goodness, okay. And then you have to unscrew this little cylinder underneath, which is a bit tricky. Oh, never mind, this one was a lot easier, okay. Unscrew the lid and free the doll. Here she is, and actually super simple. Once you get to this point, you just free her from the plastic and then our dolls are freed. Okay, so I am going to clean them off. These dolls are so beautiful. I'm already just, wow. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so before we get started, I want to show you the collector's guide. So each doll comes with one of these, and mine got a little bit wet. My product is a product sample, so I trust that the final retail release will not have this problem. Um, and I will let you guys know, because I do plan on buying the remaining doll when I can. Also, I wanted to let you know that if you paid attention the gem correlates to which doll you're gonna get. So you shouldn't be pulling doubles, which is very, very nice. So the blue gem, of course, is our mermaid character and the purple gem is our unicorn character. Our dolls came with this little collector's guide. Mine unfortunately got wet. Please note that mine are product samples. So I believe the issues with the developing of the um, potion as well as the water getting in should be gone by the time the retail release comes out. I will let you guys know. Please don't hold this against the dolls. Watch other reviews if you can. This is likely just either my incompetence or the fact that these are product samples. Uh, anyways, so it says, enter the enchanted realm of the magic mixies, Pixlings, where potions flow from waterfalls and fountains. Pixlings spread magic moments and joy throughout all the land. Now it's your turn to create a magical potion and reveal your magic mixies, Pixlings. And it says you have created Unia, the unicorn Pixling. So this is the one that goes to this one. And it says her potion power is making dreams come true. And then here it says bright, sparkly, and full of positivity. Unia is the pixeling whose power of dreams is known across the universe. With a sprinkle of Unia's potion, you're ready for your dreams to come true. And then it tells you some other little experiments you can do using the potion bottle. I appreciate this because otherwise it's like a really large useless thing. And I really appreciate that Moose seems to actually care about making it still have play value after you are done with the unboxing. And then here we can see the other characters. So 
And oh, look at that. It actually tells you who will you magically create. Look for the gem color. So Unia has the purple gem. Dear Lee, which is one we didn't get, has the pink gem. And then Marina has the blue gem. Marina is one of my favorite names ever. So that is exciting. I actually did not know her name until just now. All right, and then let me get the other collector guide out. I'll be right back. Marina said, you have created Marina, the mermaid pixling. Her potion power is love. And it says, Marina is deep and thoughtful and has the sweetest heart. She creates a magical wave of affection with her power of love wherever she goes. Just a few drops of Marina's sweetheart potion will grant you your heart's desire. Very cute. Okay, now I want to show you one of the things that had me the most excited when I saw it. This little ring thing that we pulled off during the unboxing it's actually a stand. So the doll's shoes have these little holes on the bottom and you just stick their little foot in and there you go. So the dolls can stand and they're very nice little stands that aren't invasive at all. I really wish more doll brands would do this because it's not very invasive to have a little hole in the bottom of the shoe and it's just super, super nice. Of course, a lot of dolls are too heavy to do this. So it's definitely something that works really well for mini dolls and action figures, but it's not common to see for whatever reason, so yeah, I just really wish it was more common. So I really appreciate that these dolls come with stands. That is so exciting, and I definitely wasn't expecting it. Since Marina was the first doll that we unboxed, let's take a closer look at her first, and wow, this doll is so beautiful. The designers really did an amazing job on this one, and honestly, her hair is wet right now, but that really helps me just really feel how soft and amazing her hair is so there's absolutely no product in this hair and it is nylon hair premium nylon hair i believe this is kiwi nylon and she's got a decent amount of it on her head it definitely covers it you might have trouble with hairstyles in that little area but otherwise looks really good about you know standard fashion doll rooting and all right now let's take a also like the colors i love that teal color this color right here beautiful it could be a little bit greener for me to be a true teal but that color is beautiful and then she also has this lighter color and this pink in the hair and it's just a beautiful effect when blended i honestly almost thought there was purple in the hair because of the way the teal and the pink look together it's very very pretty and then if we zoom in on the face the faces are so glorious so they have printed eyes the resolution is high enough that from far away you really can't tell so it does not bother me but if you zoom in you can kind of see it i think it i think it works well but it might not be for everyone she has this really nice sparkly finish to the skin it's very subtle as it's in the plastic very very pretty i really like it and then just look at the eyes and like the little scales the blushing the nose blushing i really hope we see more nose blushing in dolls it is my favorite. I love it so much. I think it's so cute. I do it for my makeup all the time. Too excess, yes, but I just think it's so cute. And then her little tiny lips. I love the pouty lip. I think it's beautiful. And check her out in three-fourths. She's just beautiful. Oh my gosh. And all of the Magic Mixies pixelings appear to have a little jewel on their heads. So Marina's is a little circle and it's subtly sparkly as well. It's very pretty. And then I was so excited to see this. They have these huge protruding ears. So Marina's are cute little fin ears. Aren't these gorgeous? So cute. And then if we move our camera down, we can take a look at her outfit. So these dolls feature fabric clothing and print or like Pixlings dolls feature molded on clothing and sewn clothing. Now, I know molded on clothing is a deal breaker for a lot of people. For me, if it's well done, I like it. And it depends on the doll because sometimes it seems to be like an outfit piece that I would really want to mix and match. In this particular case, I don't really see myself doing too much fashion doll play with these dolls. I usually will, I almost always like prefer fabric clothing and I probably would have preferred fabric clothing here. But one of the strengths of doing molded on clothing is that you can get a lot of detail that might be difficult or impossible for the scale or for the budget for the doll. And they did a really good job here. I love the scale texture. I don't know if that would have come off well in fabric form. And there's little ruffles and the little straps and then they're actually tied on sculpted. Oh, there's a little heart on the back too. Cute. And then there's little hearts as well. So the fact that they did like full detail here makes it where I don't mind the molded on clothing. Sometimes it's molded on clothing with no painted detail and it's like, what was the, that just looks terrible. So I really feel like they, the designers 
knew what they were doing here. They created something very pretty and it looks really nice with the fabric clothing, which I'm also extremely impressed with. So it is a printed fabric. It is stretchy. So it's some kind of like performance knit type of fabric. This type of fabric is actually a little bit expensive and I really like it. It's one of my favorite fabrics to actually work with. Um, and I think this looks super good. This skirt is really, really nice. I tend to have a problem with printed on scales, but I think they were really well done here. I think they are subtle enough while still showing enough where they look good. They don't look super like fake and they also fit the art style of the doll. I think that's the main thing that is important to me. And as you can see, that little heart motif that's on her top has appeared again, printed on. And then there's little printed on pearl beading with little heart beads. Very, very cute. And do they continue on to the back? Wow, they do. They continue on to the back. It's actually impressive. Um, and then as you can see, there's little pink scales throughout. Very, very cute. And it gives the illusion of having more colors in it than it does because of the iridescence of the fabric. It's extremely, extremely pretty and very well done. And then she also has this little ruffle on her skirt. It's a bit more of a plasticky material, but I think it looks really nice. And I really appreciate that it is not... Um, what is that material called? The the material most companies will use for mermaid dolls, I think is very cheap looking and weird. It's like cellophane looking. Uh, so I appreciate that they did not use that. And then down here, we have her little shoes. So she does have flat feet and she has little sandals. They are pink. Well, they are blue at the sole and then pink with the little beading straps. So you could see that heart again and beads all over. There's a little MM for Magic Mixies on the bottom of the shoe. And scales here and a little heart. Super, super cute. All right, so now it's time to look at the articulation. I didn't know what to expect because I noticed she did have elbow joints when I first saw photos of them, but that's all I had noticed. So let's see. I really like the tilt of the head. It tilts up, down, sideways, and can turn all the way around. So that's ideal. That's good. And then the shoulders also function really nicely. You can go over a 180 either way, which is very nice. It gives you way more movement. And then um, she can also, of course, go all the way around. And then with the elbow, hmm, it's the way it's carved. You can't reach a 90 degree. But if you were to carve this out yourself, it would probably go past a 90 degree. Very weird. I also think, oh, it can go both ways. Okay, I was going to say, like, that looks really unnatural and strange. Um, but okay. So with a mini doll, I think that this is a fine amount of articulation. I do wish that the upper arm was carved a little bit better so you could reach a 90 degree, but at this scale, pretty good. And then she can hit a full sit. Unfortunately, her legs do like straddle out a little bit when she does that. And then her head also tries to weigh her down, but you can use her little arms behind her to hold her up. And unfortunately, there is no knee articulation. That's something that I was really hoping to see, so... It's a bit of a bummer, but yeah, so that's what the art- oh wait, let's go backward too. So can't go too far backward again because of the way it's carved. Also, she does have little scale underwear sculpted on, which is pretty cute. Our second potion created this doll, and her name is Unia, and I mean, she's not mermaid themed, but wow she's beautiful. So to start off, let's take a look at her face. She has such a beautiful face. I really am impressed with the art style and the way that the faces came together on these dolls. I just think they're absolutely beautiful. I do wish that the eyes were a bit less shiny, but I know that's just a personal thing for me because I've had a lot of people communicate to me that they actually like when eyes are shiny. I just don't like it as much for photos. I really like her makeup. It has these really cute little clouds. I love the little Pegasus wings on the cheeks. She's got stars. These Look at the star and moon freckles on her little nose. So cute. And again, love the blushing. I love the little dark printed line for the lips as well. Just helps make it stand out. I'm surprised. She looks like she's like less pouty than... <gasps> yeah, she is. I don't think they have different face sculpts. I think that it's just the way that they're painted, but cute. So this one had little teeth painted on and looks so much more pouty. And then Unia just looks a little bit happier. That is very, very cute. Love the eyebrows too. I also really like that the eyebrows have this white outline on them. The white lines remind me of highlighter on the eyebrows and I think it's very cute. And then Unia has a very impressive gem on her head. It's very cute. Much more prominent, much more obviously a gem than Marina's, but 
Ooh, cute. <laughs> I think Marina's is supposed to be something more like a moonstone or something. You know, it's supposed to be a little bit more subtle. And then Yunia actually has these really cool elf ears, which I really like this design choice. Instead of doing, I don't know, horse ears because she's a unicorn. I think that this is a lot cuter. And then I also love that they styled her hair into this he may cut sort of thing, I guess is what you call this. I'm not sure. Um, because it blocks the way that the ears are not identical in color to the skin. I don't mind that too much because they are meant to be like big old fantasy ears. So it's not a big deal, but it's because these are made out of a hard plastic as opposed to the soft plastic or no softer plastic of the head. And the head is like semi-transparent too. It's very cute. I mean, not in a way you can see, but it's clearly a little bit transparent very pretty look how gorgeous this doll is i love her oh yeah and then of course she's a unicorn she's got a unicorn horn and check it out it is made out of this semi-transparent material it's really pretty and there's big flecks of glitter in it but not a whole lot i like the subtlety of that so cute and now let's take a look at her hair so first this is what she looks like with her ponytail in. She has a high ponytail. She has three different hair colors, a light pink, a purple, and a dark pink. And her hair is crimped a little bit. I guess it's just curled. I don't think you would call this crimping, but it's super, super cute. And it, it has like a really nice feel to it. Like, it, again, it's Kiwi Premium Nylon, so it's very nice hair, but I just think like the way they curled it just makes it feel super, super nice. And then I'm going to take her hair down so we can take a look at her rooting pattern. All right, so let's take a look at that rooting pattern. Let's see. <gasps> Yay! I was actually worried. So she does not have a part line, unfortunately. So if you wanted to do a different hairstyle, you may have trouble with it. But as you can see, there's plenty of hair on this head. I do believe it's a little bit less than Marina, but not enough to bother me too much. So that is awesome. Yay! Moving on to her outfit. In the photos, I thought this was supposed to be like horse fur or something, but no, it is a long sleeve shirt with little swirlies on it. So her outfit reminds me of something like Rainbow Bright. It's very cute. I really like it. And it is very like 80s magical girl. Very, very cute. So for starters, like I mentioned, she has this long sleeve shirt that is painted and sculpted into place. So it's very swirly. I really like it. And there's a little star sculpted there and there. And then her top has like kind of a furry texture to this blue part. And then there is a smooth purple part. And this gem is a little bit metallic. Like I think it has metallic paint, but the rest does not. And then she actually has these little wings. So she has an extra feature, whereas Marina did not have anything like this. And I like that they're made out of a soft plastic so you can play with them without them snapping off or something. Um, and they're just kind of stuck into the back. Oh, look, the swirls actually extend onto the... Oh, that is supposed to be the swirl. Sorry, that just looked like fur. See, I... <laughs> okay, well, it's swirls. It definitely looks like fur from afar, but I think that's the swirl texture. Interesting. Anyway, either way, it's cute. I prefer the swirls to the hair that I thought it was. And then her skirt... Not as, like, nice of quality as Marina's, but this is what the design called for, and it is very good quality for what it is. So there is a tool fabric. This is a really nice tool. It's very, like, it doesn't feel super artificial. Obviously it is because it's tool, but it's very nice. And then there's these little hollow foil moons and stars all over. It's super pretty. And then there is another skirt underneath that has a cloud pattern with purple, pink, and blue. Super pretty. Super, super pretty. And the skirt is not finished. This is just kind of a satin fabric, but it does seem like they have nicely burned edges, so it shouldn't be an issue. And then if we move down, we can take a look at her little shoes. So let's see. Okay, so they are sandals again. So the sole of the shoe has little swirlies and clouds. Oh, it kind of looked like hair because I think those were clouds on the top. And on the bottom of the shoes, you can see stars and MM. And you can also really see that cute, what I think is like a duochrome pigment in there. And also, we have a purple transparent material, but it goes into this blue paint on the side. It's very, very pretty. And I just love the glitter they used. I think it's awesome. And there's just a little pink painted star. So there's two colors of paint on here technically because it looks like they sprayed this blue one, which looks awesome. That's really, really cool that they did that. And then this one's just kind of stamped in place or something. And there's also these little wings coming out of the stars. Super, super cute. 
really like the shoes. Both of these dolls have really nice little shoes, even though they're so small that they're not something I would have paid too much attention to. So I appreciate that. That's very cool. All right, let's get into our final thoughts. I am so glad Moose Toys has come out with another doll brand. These are amazing. Uh, I really, really love this trend of making a toy brand of something else and then just making it into dolls later on. We need to see more of that. Can't wait till we get the big sister versions of these also. <laughs> Not that that's happening, I'm just speculating because that tends to be the natural progression of doll lines right now. These are really, really nice. For mini dolls especially, these are very, very high quality. I do, as a collector, wish that there was a less involved unboxing process so that there could be more budget put into the dolls. But I will say that I don't see a single spot where I'm like, they cheapened out here, you know, because the dolls, the dolls were designed with the budget in mind and they really seem to maximize what the budget must have been for these dolls, which is very impressive because the big old potion tube could not have been super cheap to add to the, um, to the budget for the doll, as well as all of the little ingredients for the potion. Um, and I really like that they have some kind of feature where you can play with the potion again later on. That is really cool too. I... As a collector, I'm not the biggest fan of getting a big plastic tube, but I know that these obviously are dolls for kids, and that is a feature that is very enjoyed, clearly, because the Magic Mixies brand has been doing super well. Um, they are very, very popular, and I cannot wait to see how these are in stores. By the way, these should arrive in retailers, at least in the U.S., August 1st, and they retail for $17.99. I think that if you divide that price in half, half of it being the experience of the unboxing and half of that being the doll price, the dolls are very worth the price. But um, the dolls themselves do not feel like dolls that cost $17.99, of course. But I understand completely that the unboxing experience and all of the different things that it comes with to make that experience happen is the reason that the price is a little bit higher. I'd say that these dolls are easily worth $10 to $12.00. They're really, really nice. Um, if, to make them perfect, because I actually don't have any real problems with them, I don't mind not having wrist articulation at this scale. I don't mind molded on clothing at this scale or just in general if it's well done, and I think these are well done. Um, to be perfect, I need them to have knees. Come on. I hope that we see knees in the future. I just, I think these are absolutely beautiful. The designs are so amazing. They've really created something very unique. These designs are super, super unique and beautiful. And these are de definitely making me want to take a closer look at the other Mixies products because the Mixlings, I think they're called, the small like blind box figures, I've been very tempted by. They're really, really cute. These dolls are awesome. And again, thank you so, so much to Moose Toys for sending these to me. I really appreciate it. I think these are amazing and I really appreciate... um you reaching out. I was so, so excited to hear from you. Um, also, I want to say a disclaimer again that the potion experience did not end up working, but I think it is my fault because I spilled a lot of the developer on both dolls. You can see me do it, which is the thing that's supposed to turn the potion clearer. I waited over an hour for both of them and saw very little change, but again, I do think that was my fault. And then also I filled the water way over the fill line. So I think Okay, on one hand, I just needed to be more careful, but on the other hand, I don't know if a lot of kids that would get these dolls would be that careful, so... But also, these are samples far ahead of the release, two months ahead of the release, right? Or one and a half months ahead of the release. So, perhaps these are a bit different from the final product, hopefully with the potion situation. Maybe I was supposed to wait longer than an hour, but I figured, like... I don't know if this is going to happen, but I do actually think that's my fault. Also, I didn't say Magic Mixus. I'm embarrassed. I really thought it was Magic Mixicus for, Magicus Mixicus for some reason, but it's Magicus Mixus. My bad. <laughs> um, anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think of these dolls. I'm so excited to see more from this brand. I cannot wait to be able to get my hands on the final doll that I do not have yet, but for now, I'm so excited to have these two. And yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Really quickly, I'm going to hold them up over my other doll show so that I can show you the size of the dolls. All right, so just wanted to show you next to some common doll brands, the scale of these so that you can get a feel for it. So some Barbies. Yeah, I love the colors. These are so gorgeous. All right, for all this time, bye.